Hey, tiny plant explorers. It's your friendly neighborhood good times weirdo, Kick the PJ here. And by no coincidence, that is also what it says on my shirt. Today, I'm here to give you some life advice and ooh, it's gonna be bad and not the good kind of bad. That is right. Bad Life Advice is a little running series here on my channel where you guys come to me with your problems and I give you the worst advice possible. Now, it's not all just spoofs and goofs because with the bad advice, Perhaps you might find some good advice. Or maybe it's just gonna be terrible, here we go. Our first problem comes from Bean. How do I stop the goblins from eating my motivation to do anything? Motivation goblins, they are a problem. I've got to ask, how adept are you in the katana? Because if there's one thing that can kill a goblin, it's the cold steel of a katana. Most things will be killed by that PJ. <laughs> Funnily enough, I am actually giving out free katana lessons to anyone who likes this video. So if you wanna be trained in the sword by the master of cringe foo, look no further. Captain Maggie Pie comes to us with the following problem. There's a spider in the corner of my room. What do I do? Well, this is actually a very simple solution. Simply take a match and burn everything. Your entire house, just everything you've worked for, all your possessions, just let it go because it's not worth it. I'm a bit conflicted now because that was actually good advice. Alligator emoji says, I'm always tired. Okay, this is an easy one. So being tired can be a side effect of not getting enough sleep. So what I would suggest is go to bed and sleep for roughly four to six years. And you're gonna be so fully rested that you won't need to sleep again for another like eight years or something. Your bones will turn to mush, but you won't be tired anymore. So pros and cons, pros and cons. Katie says, I don't have enough money for merch and books rob a bank. Just see what happens. That's all I got. <laughs> this is the only series where you'll hear me recommending robbing a bank. <laughs> Lala Babes asks for advice on a long distance relationship. I do truly hope that you realize I'm doing a bad life advice video, but here we go. Long distance relationships, I get it. You live at the bottom of the country, they live at the top of the country. Don't worry though, I've got your back. What would you say if I told you you could be in both places at once? So this is a bit weird, but bear with me. Essentially what you need to do is get half of your body surgically attached to the other half of your partner's body. Then half of you will be up north, half of you will be down south. Yeah, not sure about that one. <laughs> Memo Panda asks, I'm waiting for my microwave to ding, but these 30 seconds are endless and I'm bored. Any suggestions of what to do? Ah, now funny thing about microwaves that not a lot of people know. You can actually speed up the time it takes to cook something. Not by increasing the temperature, no, but by stuffing the microwave with aluminium, forks, bits of metal, complex circuitry, just all of these things. Just shove it in the microwave with your food and it should just speed up the process with fire. It'll speed it up. Your microwave will explode, but the food will cook faster. Probably can't eat it, but it'll cook faster. Oh my God. Emily asks, what should I name my mum? Now, this is a weird question because I would assume your mum already has a name, but in the event that she was never named and it is now up to you to name her, I have got your back, Emily. You need to give her a really, really solid name. I'm gonna say, let's go with Flambunculus because the name Flambunculus is just so underused these days. And it quite frankly sickens me. I'm gonna call all my kids Flambunculus, all of them. So I bless this name onto you, Emily's mum, now formerly known as Flambunculus. So have fun with that. Sydney asks, how do I get curlier curls? Well, Sydney, I'm assuming you already have pretty curly hair. So to go curlier, there's only one thing you can do. Curl your entire body. It's done to death. It's some new technique. Must be, but why did Just like that. Rodenite asks, how do I look good for pictures? I always seem to look like I'm uncomfortable. I mean, I usually am, but I don't want to look uncomfortable. How to look good in pictures. A lot of people are probably gonna tell you, just fake confidence, fake it till you make it. I say no, no, it's not worth it. I say be yourself. There is nothing better than just being yourself. However, you are gonna need to do something about the other people in the photograph. What you need to do is make everybody else around you look more uncomfortable than you do. So at least then compared to everybody else, you'll look golden. So just before the photo is taken, say something really offensive, something really out of character. Tell them that you blew up a cat. There you go, simple fix. Jackie says, I got a debit card the other day and now I can't stop myself from online shopping. Okay, Jackie, this is an addiction and you need some bad life advice. See, the problem you're having is that you're spending money that exists in your account. So what you need to do is take that debit card, throw it out the window and go get yourself a credit card. Get yourself a credit rating. Now, spend to your heart's content with invisible money. Huh? It's proven to work for a certain amount of time. Cecilia says, why does everyone hate my conspiracy theories? It is probably because they are bad. What you need is a really good conspiracy theory. One that just no matter how much you try, 
It can't be denied. I'm going to suggest you start with something like Lizard People Walk Among Us. You build upon that, you make it more convincing, you go from there. Tinfoil hats help as well. So just wear one of those to school every day. But don't get in the microwave with it. Because Anna asks, how do you tell someone you've been pretending to be friends with that you don't like them? This is a tough one. You've got yourself into a sticky situation here. I would suggest continuing that fake friendship for a good 10 to 20, maybe even 30 years. Build a nice close rapport with this friend. Create tons of lovely memories. And then when you're around 60, 65 years old, just send them a text just saying, lol, got him. And then just never respond. Ever. Works like a treat. I mean, you could just tell them up front and break it off now, but that would make no sense. Sana asks, can you help me make a good D&D character? Sure, here's a little one that I made up off the top of my head. Your character is Sana the Slime. You're a bucket of slime. You have no abilities, no charisma, no intelligence, no strength. You have nothing. Nothing going for you. You're just a bucket of slime. Melissa has a problem. University. I feel like everybody is smarter than me and that they all have plans. And I'm here failing two subjects. Okay, this is Operation All or Nothing. It's gonna be tough, but it can be done. If you're gonna appear smarter, you need everybody else to appear dumber. So you need to become the goody two-shoes of the class who's all like, oh, I'll hand your homework in for you. No problem, you go get a juice. Don't worry, I'm gonna, I'll hand it in for you. And then you make some subtle tweaks to everybody else's homework. And by subtle, I mean you just trash it, trash their homework. Change all their answers. One plus one equals ice cream, that kind of thing. It can't go wrong. There, there's nothing about this that can go wrong. Supermarket Flowers says, I feel like I'm playing Animal Crossing wrong. Okay, and I'm guessing you're probably saving the game every time too, which is creating a snowball of bad decisions. <sighs> Okay, look, Animal Crossing is the kind of game that needs to be beaten in one sitting, okay? So you need to really commit yourself to the game. You don't put it down, you don't save until you've finished it, okay? That is how you play Animal Crossing. Adelia says, I can't say the multiples of nine from memory. What do? Buy a calculator. Janie asks, how do I win a student film festival? I would suggest going to IMDb and searching for the top grossing films of all time. What is it, Titanic, Avatar, The Dark Knight? One of those. I would suggest thinking of one of those films and entering it. Just enter it into the competition. See what happens. You might win. And for our final problem, Courtney says, how do I cope with the fact that I don't have a dog? Now that, that is a tough one. I too do not have a dog and this is a problem. So I would say to anybody out there who does not have a dog, I would say, become the dog. Stop saying words and walking on your two legs and start saying bork and walking on fours. Get yourself a badass collar, really dog it up, you know? I call this method dogging and it is proven to work. In fact, as well as katana lessons, I am also giving away free lessons for how to be a dog for everybody who likes this video. So if the sword didn't do it for you, maybe there's more incentive to like the video now. And that's gonna do it for this week's video. Thank you very much for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed my bad life advice. And I should just clarify as a disclaimer, don't do anything I said in this video. It was all just a joke. And although I have enough respect for you that I know that you know that. This is more just covering my own butt. You never know with the internet. So yes, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll consider my katana lessons and my how to be a dog lessons. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!